Sound Sleuth Lab. First up in the Sound Sleuth Labs, a small, high-quality microphone that will serve multiple purposes. These are based on the PUI 5024 microphone capsule. What makes this capsule and a couple others we will use nice is they have a little field effect transistor or FET already inside, making it very easy for us to interface it to a recording device. In fact, so simple, all we need to do is solder the capsule to some wire and then the wire to an eighth inch jack. The rest of the circuit's already inside the recorder. We are using shielded wire to minimize electrical noise and hum. I use Mogami W2697. It is two conductor shielded, thin, flexible, and pretty easy to work with. The first build is a PIP or plug-in power mic. We have two more choices to make here, stereo or mono. I know, let's build both. The starting point is to prep the wire. I use a single edge razor blade and carefully roll the wire to cut the outer jacket. Now pull the inner copper shield to one side and cut it back. We need about a quarter inch or so of exposed inner wire. Now strip back just a little bit of the red and white wires. When we tin them, the insulation will naturally pull back further due to the heat of the soldering iron. With the capsule held gently in either a small vise or one of those alligator clip third hand things, solder the red to plus and the white to the other connection point. Later we will seal it with adhesive, but only after we test it. Now for the connector end. Put the part of the jack with the solder connection points in the small vise. Now this is the important part. Slide the rest of the connector pieces parts over the wire so that they're already there when we solder the connector. Okay, now we take off about three quarter of an inch or so of the outer jacket. Now strip all the insulation from the white wire and twist it with a shield. Now tin this with solder and then cut back all but just a bit of it. Now tin the ground connection of the eighth inch jack and solder the combined white wire and shield to this. For the mono mic, we're gonna solder the red wire to both the tip and ring connections. You can do this two ways. Strip back and tin the red wire and then feed it through both or just push them together and solder them to the red wire. Either one works. When finished, inspect your work and then screw the connector together. Done. Now for the two channel or stereo version. This time we will have two wires coming in. Get rid of the spring part and slide the housing then the plastic inner sleeve over both of the wires. Wire prep's exactly the same except we are twisting and soldering both shields and both white wires together into one connection to ground. Once tin, cut back all but about an eighth of an inch or so. Tin the ground connection on the connector and solder. This is a lot easier when I didn't have a camera in my way. All right, let this cool and tug on it gently to make sure it's tight. Once the grounds are connected, trim back and strip and connect one red wire to the tip and one to the ring. This part is easier than the mono one as you actually only have one connection point per wire. You can either feed the tin wire through the hole or tin the connection point and solder to it. And again, once finished soldering, inspect your work, lower the plastic sleeve, and screw on the connector body. We've got one final step. Test them to make sure they work. Testing one, two, check. Then using a blob of some of the E6000 glue, coat the back of the mic body to include the wire up to the black jacket. Don't worry about how this looks now. The glue shrinks and pulls back as it dries. I use my alligator clip third hand rig to hold them upside down until the glue dries. All right, the hard part's done. If you want to connect the mic capsule to an XLR input instead of an eighth inch jack, you need the P48 version. This build uses the fantastic and simple P48 circuit. One resistor, one capacitor, and an XLR connector. First step is to bend the negative lead of the capacitor upwards and parallel to the capacitor body, and twist the cap and resistor leads together. Solder these together and cut off the excess. Trim the other two leads so that there is enough to go into the XLR inputs. With the XLR jack body mounted in the vise, tin all three pins. Tin the resistor and capacitor leads. Now solder the resistor lead to pin 1 and the capacitor lead to pin 2. Ensure that you have the XLR outer cable housing and inner plastic piece on the wire prior to continuing. Prep the wire by stripping back about three quarters of an inch of the outer jacket. Twist the shield together, tin the shield, and then trim it back with enough exposed to solder to pin one on the XLR. The red wire connects to pin three of the XLR connector. The white wire connects to the junction of the resistor and capacitor. Once these are connected, 
inspect your work, making sure that everything is connected and there are no shorts. I insulate the internals with a small piece of electrical tape, starting between the capacitor body and the resistor capacitor junction, and then wrapping around all the components. Assemble the connector outer portion and then test. There are more detailed build instructions in the associated instructable. See the link in the description. The PUI 5024 makes a high sensitivity but very quiet microphone that is perfect for nature recording and sleuthing out all kinds of sounds. Enjoy and subscribe if you like this video. Testing. Sound Sleuth Lab.